for their horses. In fact, when I brought the bus around, there was an Amish lady here. She was just leaving. Um, but sometimes this place is packed. Sometimes they're waiting in line to get room to tie their horses up to go to shop mm. at Target. The Amish don't have any dietary restrictions. They can eat anything they want. So whatever they can't grow on their farm or in their garden or raise with their animals, they just go to the grocery store and buy. Um, you'll see them in the grocery store buying everything we buy. Snacks, cereal, soda, oh, okay. Oh, cool. okay. juice. Yeah. I mean, they have, like I said, they have no dietary restrictions. They eat everything we do. County is our beautiful farmland. Lancaster County has some of the richest, most fertile, non-irrigated soil in the whole world. Wow. wow. Okay. That and the Amish, when they were in Europe before they came to the United States and settled here in Pennsylvania, they were all farmers, and they were um, very prized for their farming ability in Europe. All the noblemen wanted them working on their estates because they were such good farmers. So that's what drew them here to Lancaster. That's why they settled so heavily here. They've been here since 1740, right in the uh, late 30s, 1738 or 39, right around there, they started settling here in Lancaster County. Now, this is an Amish farm here on the right and the left. And just to give you an idea how many children, one family has 11 children and one family has 13. Oh, wow. The average family at this time has approximately eight children, if you average it out between all the Amish. Um, being that they, they're farmers, they always wanted lots of children because, that, of course, that's free labor. Um, is English, and the brick house with the addition is Amish. If you look up in the back, you'll see their buddies. Oh, okay. So they do live right amongst everyone else. Okay. They don't always live on farms. Being we have their, over 34,000 Amish, there's not enough farmland for all the Amish. So they have really had to go out and find other ways to earn a living, uh, and they only go to eighth grade. There are no professional Amish people. If someone would choose to go on with their education, they would no longer be Amish. Oh, Because oh, the wow. Amish do not allow it. Um, they feel that you get your, uh, your formal education to your eighth grade, and then after that, you get your real education, because now you will be learning a trade. You will uh, be an apprentice, and you will learn how to earn a living. And they feel, the Amish feel that is your real education. Okay. Um, the Amish will make or do anything they can do with their hands. They are excellent carpenters. They have a wonderful reputation for their carpenter work. Mm -hmm. They make furniture. They're welders. There's plumbers. Mm -hmm. Anything they could, you know, it's almost like a trade school. Okay. Whatever right. they could learn, but they, if they don't go to a school, they apprentice. Same way with the young ladies. When they're done with school, they'll either be a school teacher or they will work in a bake shop or a quilt shop. They all work until they get married. Once they're married, they are no longer out, uh, able to work outside the home. Okay. So. Lancaster, you're not going to see a whole lot of Amish. They are all concentrated down in this area. As soon as we get off these main roads and I don't have people tailgating me, then I can slow down and show you more. Okay. <laughs> But we're going to be going by a lot of farms. This is an Amish farm right here. They're getting their garden ready already. It's February. The Amish are always prepared. They can't wait to get their plants back in the ground. Um, some of them put plastic over them because they'll put that black plastic down because that will draw the sun so that the ground thaws out much faster. Okay. This is an Amish farm right here on the right. You see the green shades in the windows. Yeah. The laundry hanging out on the line because they do not have dryers. Oh, okay. The garden here, all ready to go. And a big propane tank because the Amish use a lot of propane gas. They will not be hooked up to a pipeline for natural gas, but they will um, They will have tanks for propane that they can control what they take and what they use. The Amish are very careful with their money. They have a reputation for being extremely honest. Um, we do have a bank in Lancaster County in Burton Hand. It is totally owned by the Amish. All the stockholders are Amish, but they hire English people to run the bank for them. That bank has one of the highest accreditations in the banking world. I don't know what the name of it is, because they have never had a foreclosure in their bank. Wow. Oh, wow. Because the Amish are always known to pay their bills. Oh, wow. Wow. But anybody can use that bank. 
Do they have credit cards? And they they have debit cards because some of them need them for their businesses. Um, the Amish are allowed to use a credit card as long as they pay it off every month. They're not allowed to run credit. Oh, okay. Um, if the Amish buy a home that was an English home and was hooked up to electricity, has electricity in the home, right? the bishop will give them uh, six months to get the power panel unhooked. They don't need to take all the electrical out because you would ruin the walls, mm -hmm. right. but they have to get the power panel unhooked from the house. The electric company will not come and take it because the lines are already there. Once they're there, they're there, but they right. have to disconnect it. The bishop will come and inspect that house to make sure it was taken down. Oh, wow. Now, this is a big Amish farm here. This man raises sheep. He raises dairy cattle. He raises tobacco. Here's some of the sheep here on the left. They're standing in the sun. They're soaking up the sun today, too. <laughs> See, there's his buggy. That's one of their work buggies, our market buggy, they call it. The lo all the clothes hanging on the line. Yeah. This second barn here, that first barn's his dairy barn. This is his tobacco barn. They have oh. slats that open up to let the air through. Oh. Last year, he harvested enough tobacco that he had to put this temporary building out because he had, didn't have enough room in the barn. Wow. We had a wonderful growing season last year. We had just the right amount of sunshine and just the right amount of rain that the farmers all did fabulous last year oh, with wow. their crops. They were cutting five, four and five cuttings off a field of alfalfa, oh, which wow. is like unheard of. This is another Amish farm up here. And up here on the left, you'll see the little schoolhouse. It's a one-room schoolhouse. Approximately 20 to 30 children go there, first grade to eighth grade. The teacher is a young lady, always a young lady, who has an eighth grade education. They also do not have plumbing, indoor plumbing in their schools. They have indoor plumbing in their homes, but not in their schools. The Amish have to pay all the taxes that we pay, school taxes, property taxes. Then they also have to pay a tax to support their own schools. Their children do not ride buses. They all walk to school. Okay. So with every, approximately every two miles, you're going to see an Amish schoolhouse because the children walking to school, they don't want any child to have to walk more than two miles. Yeah. Wow. Now, these two farms that we're coming up to here, we're going to go right down to the middle of them. Okay. The one on the right is an organic farmer. Everything he raises is organic. And in the summertime, he will have a store open where he sells all his organic produce. Um, I believe he makes cheese. I think he sells raw milk. Mm. The man on the left-hand side of the road, he is also an organic, or er, he's also a farmer, and he's a brother to this man over here. But this guy over here does something a little different, and we can't see them because it's too cold for them to be out. But this man is a camel farmer. Oh, oh. Camel? You wonder, what would he do with camels? Yeah. Well, the story is, and this is a true story, um, that little hut on top of the hill with the green roof on it, that's where they keep the male camel. Because they say, he's a little feisty. All the female camels are in the barn because they're the milkers. This man had a child that was very ill and could not tolerate any type of milk formula. And the doctor had figured out that the only thing that this child would be able to tolerate would be camel's milk. So where do you get camel's milk? I never heard of it. Wow. So this man went out and bought a camel because you would do anything for your child. Yeah. Right. He bought a camel and they started feeding the camel's milk to the child. And uh, the child thrived on it. Well, news of this just spread throughout the community, the Amish world. People were coming from everywhere wanting to buy camel's milk because other children had problems. And also he learned, as he researched it, that a lot there's a lot of diseases and a lot of different ailments that benefit from camel's milk. So he now has a whole herd, and he sells camel's milk. He sells it all over the country, packs it on dry ice. But again, he hires English people to do that for him because he can't be on the Internet. He right. can't do the telephone sales. They do that for they him. They do that for him. Now, do you have any idea what a what a pint of camel's milk would cost? No. No. Fifteen dollars. Oh wow. Oh yes. Oh, Reason being is the camels don't like cold weather. They only like warm weather, so he has to heat the barn. That's a big expense. Oh yeah. Also, there's no machine to milk a camel. They all have to be milked by hand. And a camel is very stingy with their milk, not like a cow. Where a cow gives elk. A good cow any day will give twelve to fourteen gallons of milk. From what I understand, the cow, a camel only gives a couple pints. Oh. So it's a big expense. Everything has to be done by hand. And believe me, he has no shortage of buyers. 
This is another Amish school here on the right. The brick. They're all basically built the same. Some are very old, some are newer. Mm -hmm. The Amish will add schools as they see the need. If there's getting to be too many children in a neighborhood, they'll add another school. Oh. But lots and lots of beautiful farmland. So the Amish aren't allowed to drive or ride in cars? They can ride in a car. They okay. are not allowed to own a car. They are not allowed to drive a car. Okay. Now, there are Amish people who have businesses where they need vehicles. Um, I have a friend who's my neighbor. He does tree removal. Well, he needs a truck. Mm -hmm. He leases it in the business name. They don't own it. It's leased. And he hires an Englishman to drive the truck for him. Oh, okay. They are allowed to use power tools. They use a lot of battery powered tools. You will see carpenters working, uh, building homes, and you'll see them out there with those air hammers and whatever they call those new hammers now that you just hit the button and it nails it in. Mm -hmm. There are those nail guns, they're allowed to use all that because they're used with batteries. Okay. Um, in their home, they only have gas lights because they don't have electricity, but they also use batteries. And now they're um, using more battery lights. They're changing their lamps to use um, LEDs, and they run on batteries. Oh, wow. They're a lot safer. They're a lot cooler. Uh, would you like to go to a bakery, or do you want to go to a general store? Uh, bakery? Do you want to go to the bakery? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. We're close to the Burden Hand Bakery. This, and, and the reason I like to take my people here is because they have the best baked goods. Oh, There's wow. a lot of bakeries in the area. Um, a lot of them employ Amish people, but they're really not Amish bakeries. This bakery here is, a, is actually a Mennonite bakery, but the Amish work here as well. Okay. The ladies do. But has anybody ever had shoe fly pie? No. no. That is an Amish specialty. Um, they have the best. If you want to try it, they will sell just like a little piece. You just want to taste it. Okay. It's made out of molasses. I don't know if you like the taste of molasses. Okay. I grew up on it, so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but they have the best shoe fly pie. They have a really good cinnamon buns and sticky buns. Oh. They sell bread. They make um, snitz pie, which is dried apples. So they and they they sell knickknacks. I mean, they don't just sell stuff that the Amish and Mennonite make. It's it's a it's a it's a business. So uh, they, they sell magnets. And they, they sell other things to make yeah make money because they have to survive in the world too. They have to make money to pay their taxes. So that is just up the road here. How do really? they wash their clothes by hand? No, they do have machines, but they're gas powered. Oh, oh okay. And propane okay. power. They can adapt almost anything to propane power. The one thing they will not use is dryers. Okay. Everything gets hung outside and they will not use microwaves. But they even have blenders that have are made to use batteries. Oh, okay. So they've really uh, adapted to a lot of things. So we'll spend about 15 minutes here. Sure. If anybody needs a restroom, there are restrooms asking me earlier yes. about if, you know have an Englishman work for them if they run into dishonesty you know and I'm sure it happens but this man who came in to talk to us today Amos his name is Amos Fisher him and his wife started out with a little tiny produce stand when they got first got married just to earn a couple extra dollars because he said they were very poor back then and he said it was so popular that they had to just keep getting a bigger table and a bigger table. He said then they built a little shed. And um, he says now we have a little shed. His wife started baking things. And he says, and we would close for the winter. We'd open up in the spring. And he says, we were doing pretty well. He says the one, we, you know, it was opening day. He said we opened the door. He says, guess who the first person to walk through the door was? The health inspector. Uh-oh. He says, now we have a business. Now we're being inspected. He said, well, that was okay. Everything was fine there. He says, well, next thing they know, he said, the tax man's there. We have to collect sales tax. He said, it got very complicated from just being a little roadside business. But anyway, he says, and then the tax people says, well, you have, or he says, his accountant told him you have to have a register to register the tax. You just can't mark it down. It has to be registered on a register. He said, well, you need electricity for that. Well, he says, we used a battery. That was fine. 
He said, well, my wife just couldn't handle it. He said, so we had to hire a young man. So he said, we hired this young man um, to run the register. And he says, one day my wife says to me, you know, she says, I think the money's off. She said, I think something's wrong. So he said, I did want to think that young man was being dishonest. So he said, I set a little trap for him. He said, he didn't fall for it. So he says, I told my wife, you must be mistaken. Well, anyway, this young man was also Amish. So he said, he worked there for a couple years. And he said it came time for him, he was old enough to be baptized. Because the Amish don't baptize their children when they're little. The Amish believe that you are, that you get baptized when you're an adult and you can make that decision on your own, whether you want to join the Amish church or not. Well, this young man was old enough to be baptized and he wanted to, to be baptized into the church. Well, you, in order to be baptized, you have to go to classes and go through certain procedures that you're ready to be baptized and you know what you're letting yourself in for. He says, this young man came to my house one day and he says he handed me an envelope. He says, and in the envelope was $1,000. He said, I am so sorry that I did this, but he says, all the time I worked here, I was taking a couple dollars every week. And he said, this is all the money that I stole from you. Because he would not be baptized until he told the truth mm -hmm. and he his soul was clean. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. But the Amish are very trusting people. So but again they're they say they only have an eighth grade education, but they're pretty good with common sense. Okay. And sometimes common sense is better than a good education. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, he just told us that story this morning. But he also told us a story of that he has six children. Two of them have been baptized into the church, and he said four of them chose not to. He said, which, and he teared up. And he, oh. he said it broke his wife and his heart. Because the Amish are very, very close knit, um, and they're very close in their community. He said, but his, a couple of his daughters decided that they did not want to remain Amish. They married men that were Amish, who had already been baptized into the church, but now they are no longer considered Amish, even though they practice the Amish ways. Yes. They can drive a car, they can do what they want. They still lead a simple life, but they do things that is not allowed in church, so they are no longer Amish. The two girls were never baptized, mm. so they weren't shunned. They could still go visit their parents, and he said, you know, Really and truly, when you shun someone, like your children can come visit you, but they can't like sit at the same table with you. You know, you can't share the same food. They have to be in a different area. He said, you know, that's, he said, they're my daughters. You know, they're people. What the bishop doesn't know, you know, he said some, and, and it's true. People are people, you know. Mm -hmm. You're gonna, there's a lot of people who are Catholic who bend a lot of the rules. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the Amish like that too. <laughs> They say there's a lot of gray areas anymore. The Amish don't drink. That is totally against their religion. Okay. If you get caught drinking, you either mend your ways or they excommunicate you. Oh, wow. But they do not allow drinking. But a lot of the Amish that you talk to, a lot of them grow grapes and might make a little wine just for medicinal purposes. They don't consider that drinking. Okay. You know, that's kind of like cheating a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like being human. <laughs> a little bit. The, uh, smoking. I mean, even though they raise a lot of tobacco, the majority of Amish do not smoke. Um, they won't excommunicate them for smoking, but it is frowned upon. Okay. But some of them do smoke. I'm I'm sure you all heard about the tornado that went through um, yeah. Lancaster County. Yeah. Yes. Just to give you a little update on that, I took a, I live in the area where the tornado was. I only live a couple miles from there, so I took a ride yesterday just to see what was going on. And even though it's been on TV and news and everything, mm -hmm. but a, a Amish school was completely wiped out. Uh, that school, that was on Tuesday. That school is already under roof and has um, shingles on it. Oh, wow. uh, the Amish come by the hundreds and hundreds to help. They come from, because they, they do live in districts and they do things as a district, but when there's families that need help, they all come together. It doesn't matter where you live, they come to help. Um, not only the Amish, but even the English contractors, 
they there were a lot of contractors that sent trucks out and sent workmen out to help the Amish because the Amish would help them if they had a problem. Yeah. If an English person's barn would burn down, the first people there to offer a hand would be the Amish. Oh wow. There was an Amish home, family home that burnt down. I think it was the week after Christmas. Uh, the lady had taken uh, ashes out of the stove and she was cleaning up on the floor and she put them in a garbage can and was on her way to take them outside when one of the children interrupted her and she set them down and forgot about it. Somebody came to her door, she went outside. And you know, anybody could get distracted. Well, the ashes caught on fire and her house burnt down. Her, her two little boys that were in the house, she had two little ones in the house, they got scared when they saw the smoke and they hit they hit under couch cushions because they didn't know what to do because she was outside. Right. There was a daughter that was home from school because she was sick. She was 13. And uh, she smelled the smoke and she, came, she had been in bed sleeping. And she came down stairs and the room where the fire was had a there was a door, it was closed, because it was like a mudroom that was attached to the house. She knew enough to feel that door before she opened it, because she had had fire training in her school. They said if she had opened that door, she would have been alive. Yeah. She grabbed the two little boys and ran out the front door as her mother was coming in the front door, because this all happened in the back of the house. Mm. So they, I mean, that young lady saved her two little brother's life, oh, wow. as well yeah. as her own. The very next day, they had machinery there. They said that night, Amish people come out and started organizing. <gasps> that the house burned down on a Wednesday. By Friday afternoon, that house was gone. They brought excavators in because the house was totally destroyed. They um, and by Monday, the house was up and framed. And by the house burned down on Wednesday. The following Wednesday, that house was already under roof and had shingles on it. That's how quick the Amish come together to help one another and to rebuild the house. That is really good. They had the inspectors there. They had or they had blueprints. They were ready to go, and they all come in and uh, help. This is the okay. <laughs> that little girl's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love to see little kids' faces when they yeah. see the animals. They just get so excited. <laughs> I got excited and I'm not a kid. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Oh, in there? Yes, oh. Um. Yeah, this is their dairy barn where oh. they milk their cows. Now, this man does not have any electricity, but he has generators. Because oh. they do have milk machines. Um, they do have to use electric milkers because it has to go through a pipeline. That's government regulations. This way the milk is never exposed to the air mm. right? or germs or bacteria. Um, so all that needs power. Like I said, the Amish do use power. They just don't want to be tied to that grid. Okay. Um, so they use generators. They also have fans in the barn because in the summertime, with all those animals, there's a lot of heat. And it does get very hot here in Lancaster County, so they need fans to help keep the cows cool. Because when a cow gets overheated, that affects their milk production. If they're not comfortable, they're not going to give as much milk as they usually do. So they try to really keep the cows as comfortable as possible. I grew up on a dairy farm, so I do know a lot about cows. My dad always played music in the barn. Yeah. He said that relaxed them. Oh, <laughs> he oh, said wow. they gave more milk when they listened to music. <laughs> oh, that's good. This here on that the left sense. is, um, that's the holding area. Like when people come for a funeral, we we'll tie their horses up. Okay. This over here this on the left-hand side is an Amish cemetery. Oh. I'm going to pull in a little closer. Um, the Amish... All the tombstones are facing the east because the Amish believe when the Savior comes that he will come from the east. Oh. All the stones are very plain. If you notice, there's no decoration. The Amish just don't believe in putting flowers or decorations. Oh, there's yeah. nothing written on their stones other than their name, their date of birth, their death, their age, and if they were married. Oh, wow. But other than that, they're all the same. There's no thing going to the funeral hall and picking out a casket and picking out a tombstone. The Amish, everyone gets a plain pine box and everybody gets a plain stone. Oh, wow. The smaller stones would be children. Okay. okay. But other than that, these are all Amish. This cemetery was established in 1759, I believe. And they, um, there are a few stones here in the back. 
And I believe somebody told me they were some Mennonite that had gotten buried in here because they're a little bit different. Okay. But this is the Meyer Homestead. Yeah, 1759 it was established. That's a very, very old cemetery. The farm that we just left, the youngest son is the one who um, does most of the farming. And this is his home over here. Okay. You can see he has a little skid loader. Yes. It also has rubber tires on it. And that's something that the Amish don't do. They right. use metal wheels for everything, so I think he's cheating a little. <laughs> the bishop hasn't noticed, or I don't know. He hides it when the bishop comes around. <laughs> yeah. But this is another school here on the right. Okay. The outhouses. They all have outhouses. out today. It's so nice out here. We haven't passed very many. So everyone's really treated equally. Yes. In the, the Amish feel that in the eyes of God, everyone is equal. No one is more special than another person. Um, they don't do anything to draw attention to themselves yeah. because they feel everyone is the same in God's eyes. Like I say, they are Christians. Um, they don't celebrate any government holidays. They don't celebrate like Labor Day and Fourth of July. To the Amish, that's just another day. Okay. But they do celebrate all the religious holidays, the Christian holidays, okay. Easter, Christmas. Um, the Amish actually celebrate two days for Christmas. They celebrate Christmas, Christmas Day and the next day. Boxing day. They do two days of gift giving. They don't decorate like we do. Like they don't put a Christmas tree up with lights because again they don't use electricity. Okay. But they will decorate with greens and Christmas cards and make cookies with the kids. Okay. The kids will do drawings and hang them up. That is how they decorate. Christmas Day is usually spent with your immediate family, and then the day after Christmas, their second day of gift giving, you will see Amish everywhere because everybody's out visiting everybody oh, because okay. that's a holiday for them. It's a holy day. And it's a time for fellowship with your neighbors and your friends and your family. Good chicken. <laughs> There's some horses over there to the left out grazing. There's not much grass, but if there is, the horse will find it. <laughs> you will notice, um, if you have a chance to drive around, you'll see a lot of the little signs by the road that say brown eggs for sale. Oh. Almost everybody has chickens and the excess oh, eggs they sell. So, and the pretty steep going price is two dollars a dozen. Really? Now, not in the stores, but on the little roadside stands, uh, yeah, two dollars a dozen. That's good. Um, and they're all free-range chickens because everybody's chickens are all over the place. Oh, that's amazing. In a chicken house. Yeah. Lancaster County raise has a lot of chicken farms that that is their business only, raising chicken, lay, egg laying chickens, uh -huh. and they have big these big long buildings with that are they keep chickens in, but they're not the people who are, they're the commercial farmers. They're not the ones who are selling the chickens along the side of their own and selling the eggs. I mean. But in the summertime, you will see stands everywhere selling produce. Anybody has a garden, whatever, if they have extra of anything, they'll put a little table by the road with a little otter box. If, you know, they'll put the price next to their tomatoes or cucumbers, whatever they're selling, and they trust you to be honest to put money in the box because there's never anybody working those stands. Oh, wow. Some of those stands will have big coolers, and you open up the cooler, and there's eggs in there. Two dollar dozen of eggs. Ooh. This man, he rides a scooter. The Amish do not ride bicycles, they ride scooters. The reason they don't ride bicycles is because the, um, the bishop feels that if you're riding a bicycle, it can go faster than a horse, and it'll take you away from home. That Amish guy, the little boy in the buggy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he feels that it it'll take you too far from home. The Amish try to stay in their community and in their district, spend a lot of time with their families and with their neighbors in their district. Okay. When they go to church, they only go to church every other Sunday. And when I say they go to church, I should say they go to church services because the Amish do not have churches. Okay. They all take turns having it in each other's homes. That's nice. Uh, each district is comprised of between 20 to 25 families. I go. And each family, like I said, has an average of eight children. So 20 to 25 families, eight children, you're looking at a couple hundred people. So when it's your turn to have church service, you'd only probably have to do it once a year. Okay. Um, 
but let's face it, who has a house with that much room for a couple hundred people in it? Yeah. So some of them do have homes that big enough. They'll have movable walls that they can open their rooms up and take out all the furniture. But a lot of them anymore use the top of their buggy barn or their horse barn. Okay. They'll clear everything out. And some of them might even be heated. Some of them aren't. In the wintertime, you take what you get. Their church services are about three to three and a half hours long. They sit on these wooden benches that have no backs on them. They have a church wagon. I've been looking, but I haven't seen one yet because they move them around. You never know where you're going to see them. These church wagons will take um, all the church benches. When it's your turn to have Sunday services, that wagon will come to your house. It'll have all the benches, and you can put that up in your barn for everybody to sit on. Oh, okay. It'll also have all the hymnals, and it'll have silverware in it. Because when they come to your house and they're there for three and a half hours, they're hungry. <laughs> so now you're going to serve them lunch. <laughs> It's always a cold serve meal, something very simple. You know, some type of sandwiches, cheese spreads, peanut butter, and lots of goodies because the Amish love their goodies. <laughs> this here has turkeys, chickens, and there's a couple deer in there. Oh wow! Sometimes there's a lot of deer. Can you see them all the way in the yeah. back? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> he has a couple pheasants too, but I don't see them today. Do they Some have them hospitals? They do not have hospitals, but they will use our hospitals if they need to. Okay. They, they do go to a doctor. They The Amish try to uh, do their own homeopathic mm -hmm. whenever possible, but if it's something that needs a doctor's attention, they will go to a doctor. Okay. Um, they will have their children vaccinated. Um, I think they're just like everybody else. It's a personal decision, but the majority of them do get their children vaccinated. They, uh, If they need surgery, they will have surgery. The Amish are exempt from Obamacare, and that's because they have their own um, system. Okay. They have a mutual aid fund that if a family has hospital bills and they can't afford to pay the bill, the mutual aid fund will kick that money in and pay it for them. Okay. Oh, wow. I mean, hopefully, over the years, if they can pay it back, that's fine. If they can't pay it back, that's fine, too. When the Amish take a collection up at church services, they only do it twice a year. Once in the spring and once in the fall. That money goes to that mutual aid fund because their ministers, they have a bishop who is over two districts. They have two ministers in each district and a deacon. And they're all non-paid positions. They, they say they give from the heart. They don't get paid. When they are elected to that position, they do it for life. Again, they have no formal training. They're only eighth grade educated, um, but they do, they teach from the Bible. They do the Old Testament and the New Testament, yes. and all of their Bible readings are done in German, because the okay. majority of them are from Germany, some from Switzerland. Um, they have nothing to do with, pen, with Dutch people. You know, people call them Pennsylvania Dutch. Well, yeah. The correct name is Pennsylvania Deutsch which oh. means Pennsylvania German. Oh. But everybody okay. thinks it's Dutch, but Dutch. it's not Dutch. Oh, okay. It's Pennsylvania Deutsch. Deutsch. It's just evolved into, it's just more easier to say Dutch. Dutch, okay. yeah. The Amish have their own language, which is Pennsylvania Deutsch. It's a dialect of the German language. Mm -hmm. However, the Germans can't understand them, and we can't understand them. <laughs> we can pick out some words, but they all speak Pennsylvania Dutch in their homes. But they all also know English, and the majority of them can speak German because all their church services and all their hymn singing is done in German. Wow. So for only having an eighth grade education, they all basically speak three languages. That's nice. Wow. That's... Um, their children, they speak Pennsylvania Dutch in their home. The children do not learn English until they go to school. And then they will study English in school, and they will also study some German in school. Okay. So they're all bilingual. This here all was cornfields. The one here on the left with the stumps, mm -hmm. that is all tobacco fields. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, one of the reasons why the English don't like doing tobacco is because it's very labor intense. Oh, we're going to see out here. We go. Horses up here with the uh, farm oh, on the yes. right. <laughs> He's got two Belgian draft horses, and I don't know what he's pulling something behind it. <laughs> Finally, we get to see somebody. It's like, geez, there's nobody out there today. I mean, and I know they're Amish all over the place here. 
There's an Amish man down there that down that lane. He's getting his horse out. He must be getting ready to go. So he's got the buggy out. But this is workhorses. You won't see them behind their buggies. These are workhorses. And if you notice on that little machine he's riding, mm -hmm. that just has metal wheels. All their um, farm equipment that goes out in the fields, all is metal wheels. Now, a lot of the Amish do have tractors, but they never leave the barnyard. The reason they are allowed to have a tractor is because they need that dry shaft for the horsepower. Mm -hmm. Because um, the EPA now will not allow them to spread manure out in their fields unless it's been liquefied. So they've had to put in these big um, manure pits. It liquefies the manure and then they need a big pump to pump it out, to pump into their wagons, to take out into the field to spread. And a horse can't, it just can't do that. So they need power for it. Um, so they do use a tractor for that. And they also use a tractor to chop up the corn to blow it up in those big silos. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. I mean, you need power. You, you can't do that with a horse. So for that reason, they are allowed to have a tractor, but it has metal wheels and it's not allowed to leave the barn. Wow. I don't want to pass him because I can't see around that curve and mm -hmm. I don't want to take any chances. Right. But it's kind of like going back in time, seeing it. <laughs> wow, down yes. Down those big, now that, those are Belgian draft horses. They're beautiful animals. Most of the time, when they're, they're out big. working in the field, you will see teams of six or eight oh, horses. They're beautiful. Is that what we saw in the barn? They were mules. Oh, okay, oh, they, they were mules. They were mules. A mule is a cross. Be this is what I've been told. I know it's a horse and a donkey. And a donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and usually, the Amish mules are Belgian draft horses would be the cross. Okay. okay. I'm going to pass them now. I'm going to go slow if anybody wants to try yeah, and take, take a picture. Just don't take, take it out of the space. Right. If you can help it. There's a young boy. Oh, that was cool. He doesn't look much more than 13 or 14 years yeah. old. Their children learn how to drive those horses from little up. Wow. Like back at the barn, there was a pony in there and those little donkeys. Mm -hmm. uh, they have carts and they will teach their children from little up how to drive. They'll have them out in the fields on Sunday afternoons teaching the children how to handle the horse and how to handle that pony. So that they, that's second nature to them. They learn that growing up. This is a nice view from here out over all the farms. A lot of cows out today. It's a yes. little bit warmer. Yes. They try to let the cows out as much as possible the weather permits. So what's the major difference between um, Amish and Dutch? Well, the Amish aren't, the Dutch, they, they're just, they're from Holland. They're from Holland, the Dutch okay. People. Um, and there are some Amish that could have been Dutch maybe, but okay. the majority of them were German. The Amish started in Switzerland, actually. Okay. But there, it was a lot of Germans living in Switzerland at that time. 